we'll start with this shot and this is how it looks straight away. So this is actually a ProRes RAW shot. What I've done is I've just turned the camera LUT conversion off so that it's not doing a conversion. We're going to do everything within the plugin. We'll choose a camera. I'm using Panasonic at the moment. The only two camera profiles under Panasonic are GH5 and GH5S. The camera profiles are a constantly ongoing thing, so there will be more coming. They're constantly developing new ones. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't worry about it too much because I've been using the GH5S profile on all of my footage. You know, I shoot with a variety of different Panasonic cameras um, and it gets you pretty much there. And then, of course, the camera format we were shooting in was Vlog L. The next thing I like to do is just for the time being, turn the film grain off just so that it's not confusing anything and you've just got a good um, idea of the picture there. The next thing I like to do, because we will be doing a print emulation, is I like to flick over to that because that just gives you a sense of where you're at once it's printed. We're going to go with the all too popular 2383. Without really doing much, we've got ourselves <laughs> a pretty good look already. The next steps then is just following down through this pipeline and just dialing in your image. So you can do some tweaks if you wish to the input footage, make some tweaks to exposure, color temperature, tint. Uh, you can do all of that in here. Because this is raw footage, I would do my uh, tweaks to exposure and temperature actually in here because obviously we've shot in raw, so we've got the ability to do that. And same goes with exposure and um, ISO and things like that. But if you're not shooting in raw, it doesn't matter. You can do you can do that here. Next step, I'm going to have a play with some of these film stocks. There really is so much here. Um, it's it's almost overwhelming actually. I think I think there's 60 plus film profiles. I've found myself using the uh, 250D a lot, um, and I've also been using the Gold 200. Um, as well. You can just experiment and you can just get so many different looks from the same footage. It's it's really quite um, really quite amazing. Next thing I, I like to do is just have a quick play with the push and pull because this does behave differently on each film stock. If you watch the colour and the contrast here, you've got kind of three different looks. I'm just going to add a little bit of film compression just to I mean, straight away, that's done a, quite a lot. You can see the effect that that has on the footage. So we've, because it's, this was a very foggy day, we were shooting up on Dartmoor. It had that foggy kind of glow. The sun was just peeking through from up here. So I just want to bring that down a little bit and, and just balance out those highlights. Um, again, it really helps to emulate how film behaves and how, uh, you know, an actual film stock exposes. Get it nice and flat. And then you can just pull the impact slider back until you've got to a place where, that you quite like. So I want to keep this kind of muted look. In this section in color head, this is where you get to really kind of play with where the colors sit. It's, this is just about taste and um, what kind of look you're going for. You can gang these together so that the, the tints of yellow to blue, magenta to green, cyan to red um, all move together or you can do them independently if you want real solid control over the colors and exactly where it sits on the color spectrum there. This is all about taste. It's all subjective. You can go you can go as far or do as little as you like. So that's fantastic. I'm, I'm gonna leave it roughly where it is. Film grain, so we're gonna turn on the film grain. So we're gonna dial that back. I've, I've been changing the film type to positive. I'm gonna pull the shadows back too. Don't quite, want quite so much grain in the shadows and likewise the mid-tones. And I just want to increase the size of the grain ever so slightly. I'm going to add a little bit of bloom. I like to make each of these tools and the effects really strong and then dial it back. What I like to do is just kind of dial in my contrast and my exposure in the print print section to get it, get the image roughly where I want them to sit. Okay, so we just play back, see what that's looking like. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's a, that's a nice look. Of course, this wouldn't be a final grade. I've done this so quickly. Once you've got kind of a base grade going and you're, and you're happy with the direction you're headed in, it's then a lot of back and forth, diving between different settings to, you know, really play around with the look experiment. You know, what you can do here is really, really quite impressive. So hopefully that just gives you a brief overview. We'll just hop over to one more shot, um, which is a very different one. Golden hour, sunset, very bright. We'll drop Dehancer on. Again, we're going to do everything from within the plugin itself. 
I've actually tweaked the temperature ever so slightly in the raw footage. Camera input settings, again, Panasonic. We're going with GH5S because that's the best one to use at the moment. Let's go and use Kodak Gold 200. And it's a nice warm look. I'm actually going to pull it ever so slightly. Film compression, this is where you'll really see how good the film compression is. Um, and it's, it's almost just flattening out the higher end of the image. I'm going to flick over to the print. 2383 so that's that's what we're going for black point just going to bring that down ever so slightly just so that it's sitting more roughly where it needs to be and the white point as well needs to come up slightly next thing i'm going to do is just have a bit of a play with the color density and the saturation so as you can see just bringing the color density up and down it just makes those colors deeper Tonal contrast, I want to just increase the contrast slightly. I like almost silhouette-y kind of look to it. And we can even bring the print exposure down, which will give us that nice silhouetted kind of look. This is our analog color correction. And we can just, what I want to do is I want to just push things slightly to more towards red because I, I really, it was quite a red scene in real life. So, you know, things are starting to go that reddy pink color you get at sunset. So I just want to pull that ever so slightly. So we've got some nice red coming through now. One other thing I'd like to do quickly is the target white of the film print. You can cool things down or warm them up. Then we're going to add our film grain. If you want to go for that really grainy film look, I mean, it just it does look great. Um, unfortunately, as is the nature of YouTube uploads and YouTube compression, online compression doesn't tend to handle film grain very well, which I often find very annoying but it is what it is. We can add a bit of halation and that's actually quite strong. Um, so I'm just going to pull that back a little bit as well as the impact slider. We can add some bloom. Why not? Just because it, just because we can. We'll just increase the source limiter just so that the bloom is predominantly just affecting this really bright area here. Film breath and gate weave. We will turn that on because when you play it back, it, it becomes really, really helps sell the effect. You know, you can then start to really just fiddle <laughs> because there's so much here to that you can use if we just play it back yeah i'm really happy with that look i'll do a quick grade of these shots um, and i'll speed it up 